Hello everybody, uh, welcome to uh, Cause and Effect, a show about VHS. Due to a meteor shower, uh, the internet is in the air is a little bit shaky, so we have had some technical difficulties. But we are keeping on keeping on, in spite of the fact that the world might end tonight. Uh, we were talking about uh, Anna Converts. Uh, we have talked about why it's good to have them in the deck. Are there any drawbacks on featuring Anna Converts in the deck? Isaac. Uh, yeah, there might be. I've heard some people uh, uh, just mentioning that you can play more or less as many other converts as you want, but there's no issue. Uh, and I don't agree. There's an issue. The biggest issue being the opening of four vampires. If they are only other converts or mostly other converts, you can end up uh, losing a turn or so. Because uh, the crypt, uh, draw a crypt card from the top of your library part of the Anna Convert only triggers after if you've done all your transfers. So if you have four Anna Converts in your un uncontrolled region uh, and you have four transfers, you can bring those four Anna Converts into play, one of the, or rather one of them into play, use the other three of them to make the Anna Convert Anarch, and then you get to draw the top three cards, but that only leaves you with one Anarch Convert in play. Do you actually need to make the Anarch Convert Anarch? Uh, yeah. You can only because use the option to convert someone if you have actually control a vampire. Uh, yeah. And you need to like choose someone, and it's unique, so you can't play four of them and contest yourself. Or well, you can, but you're wasting pool and transfer. Yeah. Because if you put them into play as an ordinary vampire, you can't draw the top card from your crypt. Only if yeah. you make someone anarch, you can do that. Okay. So, but can you make them? Can you make an anarch convert anarch with three yeah. anarch convert? Yes, because it only stays. Ah, my head hurts. <laughs> yeah, needless to say, you can do that. And like what is Isaac is saying, uh, using four transfers for this uh, is not not an issue. Actually, using four transfers for not bringing out the vampires that you want is a huge is issue. Uh, it's you really mean, expensive. Four transfers is like that's all the transfers you're gonna get that turn. You've wasted a turn. Yeah, and especially yeah. in a deck like this where you you don't intend to actually have an Anna convert in play. You intend on using them to make make your Toridor anti tributes anarchs so that you don't have to take the action. The, the like the action allowed by the rule book to go anarch. You just want to bring up a vampire, make him or her anarch with an anarch convert, and start bleeding and never stop. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, but what are like the main differences when you why play this deck and not the dementation weenie? It seems the same to me. Uh, I can. Uh, yeah. Uh, you. The most easy one is that you get to include bounds, uh, and uh, like the telepathic instruction. That's really nice to have, and uh, also Majesty is a good card, of course. And uh, I think that the undue influence action it negates uh, the size of the vampires quite a lot because Kindred Spirits. Uh, makes you gain a pool, and undue influence makes you get a pool in your uncontrolled region. So you can compare them, but you're actually gaining a transfer with undue influence, and that, uh, in a more like efficient way or in a more direct way, actually replaces or makes uh, the capacity of the vampire smaller, since you both gain a pool and gain a transfer. A four cap, a five cap can be thought of as a four cap if you play an undue influence. In a real, in a real way, not just uh, yeah, forcing it to be that way. Yeah, and that can also obviously be a drawback. If you intend to gain pool, you can't gain more than two pool a turn, if that's the end goal. So when you have three or more minions make playing undue influence each turn, you only gain like the two pool each turn and nothing more. Yeah. But another part being, and this is, we're still on like the card flow issue, since the, the if you compare undue influence with kindred spirits, this has plus stealth instead of plus bleed, and you can argue 
argue either way what is the, the better choice. Usually plus beta is a better choice than plus stealth, but sometimes it's better. But this deck compensates uh, with Palagrand. Yeah. Yeah. With the yeah, I mean, that's that, uh, that's the the reason, as Adam said this earlier, it's the only reason why it works. It's the only reason why you build uh, the undue influence deck with this clan, I believe. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's uh, very, very true. Adam? You're save- if you want to compare Kindred Spirits to this, you're saving a card with this. Uh, undue influence with pa- Palagranda is two bleed with one stealth. Uh, if you want to compare that with uh, the imitation, you want to play Kindred Spirits for two bleed and then one stealth card, like Deny. Yeah. So you're uh, saving a card there. Yeah, the Palagranda is kind of a card, but you get it on all your minions, so and every third turn. So under influence faces under under influence is a bit more card efficient. So. Yeah, and then this is only sixty cards uh, compared to like other we- weenie bleeders. They're usually like seventy five. Why is it that this survives on 60 cards, Adam? I think it's just that. Uh, it's a bit effic- more efficient with uh, the cards, and uh, like a Kindred Spirits Weenie would include Mind Tricks, but you're not including Mind Tricks in this deck because you don't have the option to include a Mind Tricks in this deck. You don't have an additional stealth card. Yeah. Uh, so it's just like it's a Kindred Spirits deck, but you remove some of the cards. It's more card efficient. More or less, that's the reason why you can bring it to 60 cards. I think you can play this with 20 under influence and 60 cards and not uh, lose too many important cards while doing so. Yeah, as, as stated before, playing 10 art scams in 60 cards is. Redonkulous. Redonk. <laughs> donk. It's very, very. <laughs> it's very, very. Yeah, I, like, I can't even find the words. It's an exag- exaggeration, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think you're that desperate for pool. No. It's better to include some bounces or maybe delaying taxes if you're yeah. afraid of pool damage. As we said like earlier, uh, when we looked at Alex X deck in the beginning, he played four art scam at 60 cards, and I think that was uh, quite a lot. Yeah. So. Uh, some cards that I'd like to talk about... Uh, with this deck is um, Power 1, yeah, which is an Anna card as well. It's played at Presence of Potence. With the Presence, it's kind of like a bonding. Stealth and Bleed in the same card. Uh, and this furthers the comparison to Kindred Spirit Sweeney, because they have Confusion. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, I don't know if anyone has Potence. Oh, let me check. No, I don't think anyone has Potence. So you can't play it for Potence. But it's still like a nice card. You get an extra Stealth or an extra Bleed. Yeah, you could you could probably play more of that card because uh, I think you will afford can afford it uh, with blood, and if you choose to play Anna Converts uh, instead of Seattle Committee, which you should, uh, you have some extra master slots to gain in, have some blood gain in as well to yeah. compensate for the pool cost of power one. Yeah, actually, I actually think this is like a nice take on the old weenie bleedy. Yeah. And this is, a, this is a fun trick. Yeah, it's very neat. Uh, it, it, there's something about yes, yeah, trying something new that's appealing in yeah. a way. Uh, yeah. It's very similar to the basic version or the standard version we showed uh, with Alex Hick. You have a little bit more stealth and probably a, a little worse uh, library. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd say... Uh, mostly because it's so very strong with the embraces together. Yeah, with but, but you could just add some embraces to this deck then. I think you need the presence. Since Andrew Influence, like if you bleed three times with Andrew Influence and then once without it, you gotta yeah. be sure that that one bleed is gonna be blocked. Combining tap bleed and stealth bleed is not so good. So <laughs> you, you gotta have to one. You're gonna have to get that presence in some way. And that could okay. possibly work to uh, play Becoming Presence, I don't know. The thought occurred to me during this cost. Becoming Presence and Orc. It's a lot of parts. Yeah. yeah. A lot of moving parts, perhaps. <laughs> Ow! Yeah, I think that How would How to make a good deck better? You add more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. well, I think that's about it. Uh... L- uh 
maybe this should have been in the earlier parts, but one pertinent comparison with the Toy Line to Trivia in general is uh, if you want to compare them to the regular Toradors, you're gonna have to look at uh, Air Revelation. Yeah, 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 that's totally true. Uh, since I think that's the reason why Palagrande can be as strong as it is, is that they're like, okay, so they're like Toriadors, but they don't get an extra plus bleed from this card. How do we balance that? We'll give them Palagrande. Uh, so it doesn't like, it's not just that they get plus bleed, It they get plus bleed but sometimes it's a bit less than uh, the Toradors. I'm not sure how to analyze that, but I think that's like uh, a big part of it, is that Air Revelation is kind of a bad card. Plus two bleed for one blood is really expensive. You have to include it, of course, but uh, it's not a conditioning. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. It's not. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like a threat to cost one blood. And when you put it like that, it sounds really bad. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's great. I, you you need all the plus bleed that you can get, I think, if you're going to bleed. You need, more or less, to play an action every bleed and an action modifier that gives plus bleed every other action to actually make the bleed deck efficient enough to be able to win. Yeah, um, yeah uh, of course. Okay. The, yeah, any other thoughts before we sign off? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, it was really great talking about Story Door Anti Review. <laughs> They're yeah. really fun. I like. I enjoy them. Uh, they have so much of the strengths of Dominate, but they, I, it's not Dominate that they're playing with. So <laughs> it makes for a good game and a good deck, but uh, it's a bit different. So that's yeah. fun. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, uh, then I would like to start by apologizing for the technical difficulties hopefully we'll be able to provide a better show next week uh, and I will also say that our count your main deck challenge is done uh, due to poor um, what's it called participation. Uh, uh, poor participation uh, we had declared no winner I'm sorry about that, but that's just how it is. And uh, we probably won't do any challenges for a while. We'll see if we take that that thing up later. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's it for this time. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And remember, if you have any thoughts, comments, or ideas, you can post them on our Facebook page or send an email to the address below, causeampersandeffect at gmail.com. Remember to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, after the show, we will post a thread on weekend.net where you can continue the discussion. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, have a good night, guys. Say goodbye. See you.